Hey guys, Mr. Riz here. So I'm going to help you finish up the uh, 2.1 section in calculus. So this last part, we're going to kind of look at the uh, visualization or the visual effect of a derivative on a graph. Um, so let's first just look at the equation here. x squared uh, minus 2x minus 3 on a graph. And if we wanted to go ahead, we can plot some points to figure out where the values would be at. Um, and there's a lot of different ways we could do this here. Um, but I'm just kind of graphically sketch how to graph. We know, okay, if I plug zero in, this would be at negative three on the graph. All right, and then let's see, just start plugging in numbers here. The other thing we could do here is we could factor this probably. This is what, an x uh, minus three and an x plus one. So that means we'd have at negative one would be zero, at positive three would be zero. Uh, would we have a min at one? If I plug in 1 minus 2 minus 3 would be what negative 4. I can plug in 2, and then I could probably plug in like what's 4. 16 minus 8 is 8, and then 5. It's going to be symmetric over here. Okay, and we could have plot that in Desmos and got the exact same graph, but I'm going to look at it. Okay, what we want to do now is let's find the derivative of this graph. What is f prime of x? Okay, so we'd have to do the limit, right? The limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. I'm sure after the fourth day here, you are pretty used to this formula. So this should be an x plus delta x squared minus 2 x plus delta x minus 3 and then minus x squared minus 2x minus 3 all over delta x. All right, so let's distribute this off. We have an x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus 2x minus 2 delta x minus 3, then minus x squared, then a plus 2x, and a plus 3, all over delta x. Okay, let's start canceling some things out here. Uh, the x squared and the minus x squared cancel out. The minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel out. The 2x and the minus 2x cancel out. And so we got a 2x delta x, delta x squared, and a minus 2 delta x. All those have a delta x, so we can cancel that out. And so we'd get a 2x plus a delta x minus 2. And once we make the limit go towards 0, our derivative is just a 2x minus 2. OK, so what does that look like on a graph? 2x minus 2 is a straight linear line. So we start here at negative 2, and we go up 2 over 1. OK, and how does that look? Just like this. Okay, so now if we want to look at the two graphs, if we want to kind of compare the two graphs of how they look and what's going on here, there's a couple key features. Remember the derivative will tell us the slope at any point. And a key feature right here is right there where our derivative 2x minus 2 crosses the x-axis, where the derivative equals 0. If we look, that's where our slope is flat. So if we made a tangent line here, that slope is flat. Now on some other sites here, like I have, you know, at three here, we get a derivative value of four, meaning the tangent slope would be four or a positive slope. So everything above this x axis here on our derivative means everything after this point here is all positive slopes, all going up. Everything is positive. Every tangent slope here would be positive. And you can see these increase and these slopes get steeper and steeper. Then conversely, on the other side, we can see anything over here, we get the negative values. Like down here, it's a negative 4. If we look at this point here, that has a negative slope. So everything to the left here is all negative values, meaning anything to the left of this zero point is all negative slopes. And they get lower and lower, and these get ne more negative, steep, and more negative. OK, so we're going to kind of use that I ideology without knowing what the function exactly is, we can still kind of sketch out the derivative. So let's take a look at some of these problems here. What's going on? Mouse, there we go. Let's try to sketch out the derivative. 
I think this is all we're going to do. We're going to skip the story problems and we'll address this later. Okay, so remember our key points here. If this is the function, if I look here, I have a horizontal tangent and I would have a horizontal tangent, meaning my derivative graph would have to cross the x-axis here and here. All right, so if I was going to sketch the derivative, I'm going to either be above this line or below this line, and it's all depending on the slopes. So if we all look, the slopes uh, to the left of this horizontal tangent are all positive. They're all going up. So I need to make sure my line starts above it and goes down towards the zero where it's flat. All right, in between our two horizontal tangents, in between them, the graph is going down. So that means I need to be below the x-axis. Come right back to it. And then afterwards here, all these slopes are positive. They're all going up. So I need to be above the x-axis. So what we're doing is with the derivative, we're just looking. So this derivative is above, below, and then above because the graph is going up, then it's going down, and then it's going up. So we go above, below, above because we're going up, down, and up. So let's skip 40. 42 is kind of a little bit of a weird one. Let's go to 44. I think this would be another good one to practice here. So this graph is going down, then up, then down, then up. So we know if we go down, up, down, up, we need to be below, above, below, above. Okay, so let's figure out where we make those transition points. Right here we have a horizontal tangent, so I'm going to put a dot there. A little after zero, we have a horizontal tangent, so I'm going to put a dot there. And right here we have a horizontal tangent, we'll put a dot there. So we're going to take this, and remember we were going down, then we went up, then we went down, and then we went up. So we need to be below because we went down. And then we need to be above since we were, went up. Then we need to be below since we're going down. And then we need to be above since we finish. Okay, so let's do some tougher ones here. So 43, if we look, this graph is going down and then it is flat here. So we definitely have a horizontal tangent here. It goes up and it's flat here. So if we want to talk about what's going on in between, we know the graph is going up. So we're going to have a graph or a derivative that's above. Then what we do here is look at the end. Now we're not getting like straight to zero flat, but we end up going down and we get closer to zero, right? We get, so we start going down a little bit, but then we're going to get closer and closer to zero. Same thing here, if we look at our graph, we're going to start off fairly flat, so fairly close to zero. We'll get down a little bit because the graph gets steeper, but then we go back to being zero. All right, next one here, let's look at this. So the graph starts being down, so we're going to start out negative graph, and then it's going to get more negative, more negative, more negative, and then it's going to get very negative, almost to the point, and then we're going to get close to zero here. Then after this, this graph is going to be a little bit of positive, very positive, extremely positive, and then somewhat positive going through. So maybe let's start on the right side here. The graph starts out at zero, it's flat. It's going up, it's getting positive, a little bit positive, and then very positive. And then after that, it just kind of mellows off and stays positive. So the graph does kind of have like this peak here where we get some extremely positive values, some very steep slopes. But then after that, we kind of go back to being a fairly regular constant slope. Now here's just kind of the opposite, right? We start out at a fairly constant negative slope, and then we make a very drastic jump to being very negative, and then kind of back to being somewhat negative going towards zero. There's the graph of the derivative. Now, typically, we're going to look at just regular polynomials because we're going to make a direct connection in the next section, what's going on here. But eventually, we'll try to get better at these, and we'll go backwards and forth. Okay, so this should wrap up the 2.1 section. Uh, you guys should be excited for the 2.2 because we're going to learn some shortcuts. All right, you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time.